this is Dante. These are two large, very large, assertive Tosa males who prior to um, being owned with joining us here at Pride Rock, um, they've never met ever in life. This guy is two something years old. This guy is a little over four and a half. He's working on five. He's almost five. Um, and we're out here having a good time out in the country. Fields of barley or wheat or whatever that is. It sure is gorgeous blowing in the wind like that. Corn over here to this side. And uh, we're just having a good time. We biked all the way to the next town. Way back there. We're biking all the way back to our town. And uh, no issues aside from the fact that I wasn't paying attention while, while Yoshi was peeing. And he got a little bit on my shoe. I'm upset about that. <laughs> but aside from that, we're doing good. And when it comes to it, um, I want to kind of get some stuff out of the out, out of the way. Um, let's let's be clear. Um, let a dog tell you what they're capable of. And this is going to be a video for our Pride Rock channel. It's also going to be a video for our dog training can channel. Uh, for those of you on our dog training channel who don't know the significance of this. Um, these are Japanese Tosa Inu. You can look them up. Um, I'll try to include a link in the description. You can follow. Uh, or you can, you can click on that link. It'll take you to the page that we have that has everything that we know about the Tosa thus far. And everything that, uh, everything that you can, uh, possibly hope to know. Or want to know about the Tosa at this point, but relevant facts are this is a fighting breed that is more feared than it was. When it comes to Japan and when it comes to those who know, there's the Tosa. Very serious fighting dog. Think less bloody pit fights that you see here in the West. Think more professional boxing, MMA, sumo wrestling that you probably have never heard of a dog doing. Um... Anyway, when people see this, and they see these dogs are capable of this, they tend to think one of two things. They think, A, my dogs are somehow less Tosa than any other given Tosa, because that Tosa can't be around another male dog, but my Tosas can, so my Tosas must be softer. Um, that's not true. I'd love to. I'd love to uh, be able to demonstrate that. But the way that we'd be able to demonstrate that is not something I'd consider ethical. You just have to take my word for it. And along that line, I'll tell you this: these dogs are not buddies, especially not right now. They're not buddies. They're not friends. They give each other a look every so often. It's like, look, I'm not your buddy. <laughs> I'm not your friend. But when it comes to it, what we are is teammates. We are pack mates, at least for the time being, because as far as I've said, that's what we're going to be. And that's what we are. Um, and as far as our boys are concerned here, um, they're not going to be allowed to try anything else. They're going to get checked out of any state of mind that I consider inappropriate. And we're going to do this together. we go, we have our structure sit. Dante, ah, sit. Ah, no, we're not here to eat grass. Sit. I'll hold this with my other hand right quick. While we search you out, sir. Sit. Sit. There we go. Nope. Ah, sit. 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 So, again, we do this with structure and we let them know, regardless as to how they might feel about each other, this is what we're going to do. And 
A lot of people will say this, alpha this, alpha that, dominant this, dominant that. I guess in a certain sense, you have to be above them in pack hierarchy in order to make this rule that we're going to be a pack and we're going to get along. Um, but in that regard, it's not about lording anything over them, walking around trying to prove how big and bad I am. It's just, look, these are the rules. This is what we're going to do. We're going to stop. We're going to sit. We're not going to fight. A lot of that is set up. Yeah, there's a lot of experience that goes into dealing with that. But at the, at the foundation, at the base of what I'm doing here is just simply setting rules and not taking no for an answer. That's it. And again, it's not about trying to throw dogs on their side and show who's more powerful um, so much as it is just calmly, consistently, these are the rules, this is what we're going to do. So I just want to be clear, and these guys have also made it clear to other dogs that have tried to approach us, that... If you come at me sideways, I'm going to I'm going to put you sideways, you know? What I mean, as far as it's concerned. So, there's no question or doubt there that they aren't going to start a fight, but they are going to finish it. But again, when it comes to it, uh, I just want to be clear, this has nothing to do with the quality of the temperament for my dogs. It has to do with me actively being a part of this conversation. And I just want to point that out. Those who say that at the foundation it's got to be because the dogs aren't as uh, as much like a Tosa temperament as other Tosas. To me, that's less you proving that my dogs aren't capable of being Tosas and more me sh you showing me how, um, how much you have yet to learn about dogs and how much you have yet to learn about um, powerful breeds. And honestly, to me, that just means I'm not going to give you two boys. <laughs> um, I'm not going to trust you with two boys because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're talking about. And I've had to deal with people over the phone like that. I just want to be clear. If you know what you're doing, it doesn't matter the dog's breed. It doesn't matter their age, gender, what they were bred for, yada, yada, yada. They're dogs first. If you know how to work with dogs, you know how to work with dogs. And if you don't know how to work with dogs, you should address that before you start trying to take on situations like this and or trying to present yourself as an expert on what's possible and what dogs, any given dogs, are capable of, let alone two powerful dogs like these. So, um... There's the first thing that they presume. Then the other thing that they presume, uh, uh, the first thing that they presume is the quality of my dogs. The other thing that they presume is that I'm somehow ruining the temperament of the dogs. And to make it super simple, how I, how I can say I know that that's wrong and how I can say you know that that's wrong, um, in order for a police dog to be a good police dog, does it mean that they have to attack everybody that they see? They've been trained to attack humans, so does that mean that they have to attack every human that they see in order to prove how good of a police dog and guard dog and protection dog they are, that they can't even be around their own handler? Does that prove how good of a protection dog they are? Um, football players have been trained to tackle people. Is that the reason why they they uh, sometimes get divorced? Because they're always tackling their wives? Is that is that the reason why? Of course not. Of course not. And if you know what you're doing in your training, you can put an on switch and you can put an off switch. And that's all this is. Just the same as any dog trained for any purpose. There are cows that were just here. I can have a herding dog walking with me and we don't have to herd those cows. Because I didn't turn that switch on. Same way with these guys. They have off switches. And if you know what you're doing, you can turn it on, you can turn it off. I, we're not about to eat grass. He's eating grass, but we're about to put an end to that. Don't you even think about it. You're cute, but nobody's that cute. Quit it. Anyway, uh, when it comes down to it, I just want to be clear that the training that I'm doing here is teaching these dogs civility and self-control, discipline. I can point their TOSA mode at whatever I need to point it at, something more appropriate. Instead of pointing it at our dogs or pointing it at a dog that's visiting us for training, I can uh, point it at a coyote. I can point it at a feral animal that's trying to attack my wife and kids. I can point it at, let them go in full Tosa mode when somebody's stray dog comes out trying to attack us or something like that. Um, or if somebody's somebody's livestock gets loose and tries it just the same uh, for whatever reason. I can use Tosa mode on those situations as opposed to indiscriminately where it's taking over the dog's minds. We're using it to help our pack. I just want to get that clear. Again, um, just because protection dogs don't attack everybody they see doesn't mean they're not good protection dogs. In fact, 
that means they're more of an asset than a liability. And that's what I want to make clear. My Tosas and the Tosas that we raise and breed for, they are still absolutely 100% capable of doing what they were originally bred for. And they will happily do so if required or asked to. But it's not something that they just do indiscriminately. It's not something that rules them. It doesn't rule us. And we can live our lives like normal human beings. That said, I wouldn't recommend taking these guys to a dog park or to PetSmart or Petco. And the reason why isn't because I'm worried about what they might start so much as it is. I've seen the bad behavior and misdeeds of dogs at those parks and dogs at the, at the pet stores. And if one of those dogs starts something, my dogs will happily finish it. Um, and when it comes to it, um, that's just that's just a, a situation I don't want them to ever be in or have to deal with and be labeled as an aggressive or dangerous dog for backing themselves up, backing their owner up, um, and protecting what's theirs, defending what's theirs. Um, so we just kind of avoid those situations in general, except for when I'm really feeling froggy and feel like I'm, I'm, I'm ready to deal with that. Um, so that's that. We're going to get back on the road and get back to moving down this road. We got a probably about five, four or five more miles left to go. Um, then we're going to get to our daily duties um, with the dogs and around the house. Okay. Thank you guys so very much for checking out our channel, for watching our videos. I hope I wasn't too boring. Thank you for, for, uh, for following us or watching us. If you do not already follow us, please follow. If you have not liked this video, please like. Um, and uh, please subscribe and you'll be able to keep up with the next videos we put out about Tosis. Um, we love what we do here. It'll, there'll definitely be more videos. Um, and you can learn a bit more about the breed, learn a bit more about us. Um, and and uh, hopefully it'll be stuff that you'll find useful. Um, one other thing I might would say is that if you can, please share our information. Um, I know a lot of people will say share, share, share. Um, but for us, it's actually more important. You may not know this, but the Tosa is um, what we might consider an endangered species here in the U.S. and even in the West. Um, what dogs are out there are by and large owned by people who um, they don't know much about the breed. And they, um, they, I would say the, the, the place that the pit, or excuse me, the place that the Tosa is right now is not unlike the place where the pit bull was in the mid 50s throughout the uh, throughout the 70s in that um, they no longer are used for their original purpose here in the US thank God they are not used for their original purpose um, so that kind of leaves a vacuum and people are buying them less and less as far as um, the breeds notoriety is going down in that vacuum but what that opens the door for is for bad actors to get a hold of what remaining specimens there are and use them for, um, we'll say, nefarious purposes. And when it comes to it, um, this is a wonderful breed. We just barely got the pit bull to where it's like 50-50 publicity, right? I'd hate for the Tosa to be the next dog everybody hates. So... Please share as much as you can. Get the information out there about the breed. It took so long for the pit bull to make a comeback, not because of breeding and responsible breeding practice. No, there's always been people that have been breeding pit bulls responsibly. You know, um, what it took was having people in their corner, advocates, people who could stand up and say, that's not, way, that's, that's not the way pit bulls act in reality. That's a dog that's been abused. That's a dog that's been mistreated. That's a dog that's been mistrained. And that can happen to any breed, you know? And the more that those people get out there, the more you see the pit bull coming out in a better light, you know? Unfortunately, it's still got a long way to go, but that was the change. And the same thing is true for the Tosa. We need people who are going to get out there and say, hey, look, that behavior right there, that's not a Tosa. This, this, that, the other thing, that's not Tosa behavior. This is an example of an unfortunate set of circumstances that befell an individual dog. It is not what is to be expected of the breed as a whole. Um, so when it comes to it, 
I, I think it's super important that you share, 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 even more than liking and subscribing, which would be awesome, but share so that the information gets out there and more people learn the truth about the Tosa. All of it, not just the, the, the fighting past, but where they are today and, and where they're headed. Um, hopefully, uh, more people will see this, more people will, will share, and the information will be out there. Again, you don't necessarily have to want to get a Tosa yourself, but learn about the breed. Um, we need more advocates. Hopefully, uh, some people watching this will find that true and become an advocate for this wonderful, amazing breed. Thank you guys so much for your time. We'll um, let you let you go and, and enjoy your life and let Mr. Dante get on to his kennel for the day. <laughs> yeah.